If you've seen my recent videos, you know that by now my Mario 64 codebase is already pretty optimized. I had read the entire source code to make the engine run more than 5 times faster and have all these detailed levels here run on a real N64. The background footage will be mostly recorded from an emulator for aesthetic reasons, but I will also throw in some N64 footage and provide the source code just so you guys know I'm not bullshitting. One thing that I had not really delved into before was optimizing the audio from the ground up. Nintendo cared a lot about optimizing the sound file before I started. This is actually the only file in the entire ROM that had compiler optimizations turned on. Nintendo famously compiled the actual game itself without optimizations, but they did optimize the sound, and they even ran the entire sound code through a source-to-source -source C optimizer. However, I still managed to make the sound run around twice as fast. This project took two weeks of non-stop programming. What I've discovered while working on audio has changed the way I program on the N64 forever. Before this optimization, the N64 needs between 2.4 and 4.9 milliseconds on the CPU to play back the music in this cave level here. This is on optimized compiler settings with a few of the low hanging fruit optimizations already applied. I would guess the original game, before I started optimizing anything, would run the audio in roughly 4 to 10 milliseconds in this area a bit more than twice as long. Most of the audio processing time is actually spent moving large chunks of data around to compute sound effects like stereo audios, echoes, and to compute what the background music will sound like. At first, I thought there wouldn't be anything I can do. After all, we still have to read and process all this data. The audio system is one of the most well-written parts of the entire Mario 64 codebase. But, by reading it, I realized that there was one gigantic improvement we could make. Before I can explain what this improvement is, let's talk about the N64 architecture. The N64 has a 16 kilobyte instruction cache. That means we can load a total of 4096 assembly instructions without having to reload any of them. Running a loaded instruction is about 8 times as fast as running an unloaded one. The entire audio code in the original Mario 64 source code is about 56 kilobyte. That's more than 3 times bigger than the instruction cache and it causes most of the code to have to be reloaded every single time you run the code. When reading the source, I realized that maybe I could fit everything into a single cache load with some smart optimizations. This would execute the audio code much faster and save a ton of data transfers. And you know exactly what that would mean for the RAM bus. Here's my journey. The N64's RAM is so unbelievably slow that shorter code is almost always better than code that tries to run faster and is longer. Unfortunately, the compiler optimizations Nintendo used for these files were for speed rather than size, which ironically is slower on top of being a bigger file size than setting compiler optimizations for size. Putting this from speed optimizations over to size optimizations, we can already knock the size of this whole library down to 48 kilobytes. I've mentioned before that the audio code had been run through a C source to source optimizer program by the original devs. This optimizer is great for modern machines, but it was awful for the N64 hardware. It made the game run slower and the code becomes much harder to read as you can see in this example. This optimizer causes many functions to be inlined, which bloats the code size and makes sure that every single function cannot be executed from cache. Unless, for a few crazy exceptions, you never want to inline a function that is used more than once on the N64. If I had to guess why they used this, I would guess that they were just told to use it and that it would output better code. You know, it was 96, there wasn't as much known about the N64 and about programming, so I don't think we should blame them for this, but I decided to revert all of this program. This already brings the code size down to roughly 40 kilobytes. This is the point where any kind of obvious optimizations and free savings end. We're still 40 kilobytes, which is more than twice of what we need. And the next step to this journey is to read and understand the entire audio library from top to bottom and to cut out any unnecessary fluff. There are a lot of unused features in this audio library or features that are severely underused. Audio was almost entirely undocumented, so to really figure out what's used and what's unused, I truly had to read every single thing. Most variables and functions were just named after numbers, which made this a bit tricky. Hackers give the audio library a lot of grief for being hard to work with, but after reading it, I believe this to be the most skillfully written part of the entire source code. There's a whole part of code dedicated to generating dynamic synthetic waves. 
that could just be included as an instrument because this is only used for the red coins. This saves us from including the entire code to generate the red coin sound and it saves us from actually generating the red coin sound. Arctic Jaguar simply gave me a proper sample to replace this entire part of the code. The sample is the pre-generated version of what this code would generate, thus saving a ton of math and logic and even some storage space. A bit more controversial, I have decided to remove headphone mode. Now some of you probably just gasp, what? Mario 64 has a headphone mode? And that is exactly why I decided to remove it. Headphone mode triggers a lot of extra logic and math that was going unused for most players. I decided it's best to just remove it and to make headphone users use the typical stereo mode. There are a lot of configurable audio settings that Mario 64 theoretically could use, like the reverb downsampling, but in practice it never did. The cost of their logic is low, but removing their code decreases code size by a lot. From the code you could tell that the audio library had a lot more features that were never used in Mario 64. Whoever designed these audio libraries, they had big plans. There were options to allow more than 60 notes to play or to play multiple sounds per bank instead of just one, for example. There are many unused features I won't list here, but I have removed anything that neither the original game nor my mod makes use of. Of course, I've also optimized every individual function while doing this, and I believe at this point around 32 kilobytes of code was left. Admittedly, I don't have numbers for how much code would be left after this, because I kinda did every optimization at once, but trust me, a significant chunk was gone. We tend to think of RAM as just one long list of values. The N64, however, maps every RAM address onto a place in the code cache. In practice, this means that RAM is cut after every 16 kilobytes and it wraps around to the beginning of the cache. There are functions from other files that are being referenced in the audio library. If you look at the red arrows going through the RAM segments here, that means that if there's any code on the same line, we will have to reload the cache. This is really bad, since it might force out code, despite the full size of the executed code being less than our 16 kilobyte cache can hold. Let's say only the two lines of code in red are being executed. If you follow the arrows, you see that they map to the same spot in cache. That means we've got to reload the instruction cache despite not having run nearly the full 16 kilobytes of code. Because the RAM mapping is being controlled by the compiler rather than the programmer, this will happen randomly and all over the program. The hackers came to refer to this as the performance lottery. It sounds like deciding the perfect position in RAM for every code is going to be very difficult. However, we can do better and get maximum cache performance every single time. If we can put all the reference code in RAM right next to each other. You can guarantee that no cache address is being used twice. To do this, all we have to do is to duplicate functions from the game into the audio library, and often that lets us even inline them. This increases the total size of the game by a negligible amount, but the speed up is insane. This gives us three major advantages. One, because we can inline some of these functions, the actual size of the executed code is going to be decreased, which gets us closer to our goal. Two, it guarantees that there are no cache mapping overlaps, which allows us to never have to reload the instruction cache unnecessarily. Free we get to inline functions that were previously not inlineable because they're now in the same translation unit, which is faster. A quick side note, since I learned about these instruction cache mappings, I've applied the same principle to the graph render. The graph render had already fit into a single instruction cache block size-wise, but since it was referencing outside functions, they were messing up the instruction cache mappings. The graph render took 4.95 milliseconds before this, and afterwards it only took 4.58 milliseconds. That's around 8% faster. After doing all of that, the code size was around 30 kilobytes, which is still 14 kilobytes more than the instruction cache can hold. It sounds very sad, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel that will save us. While I was out of optimizations at this point, I realized that there's actually no reason for the entire audio library to be just one block. In reality, the code has three parts that are not connected to each other, which means that they are not being executed at the same time. That means we can split them across separate blocks and we don't lose any performance from that. The parts are 1 external communication functions. These are functions the game rarely ever uses and it uses them to change audio settings and they aren't even on the sound thread. These definitely have to be moved out of the block as having them in instruction cache grants absolutely no benefits. Two, sound effect update functions. 
These run before the audio is computed. They take up around 8 kilobytes, and that's why they already fit into a single block by themselves. They don't reference anything external from themselves anymore, so we can simply split them off. We managed to never have to reload these into cache now. 3. The audio computation functions. These were the most worrisome part. Luckily, after all the optimizations, they only take up 12 kilobytes. And with the update function separated, that means that this also fits into a single cache block. Keep in mind that if we were just a single instructions bigger than the instruction cache, this would ruin this whole thing and we would have to reload the entire cache every single time we roll over. With this split being complete, we've successfully managed to run the entire library entirely through the instruction cache and we've maximized performance. There's nothing we could possibly do anymore unless we found a way to improve the logic. And these are the results. Audio now only needs 1.9 milliseconds to 3.8 milliseconds. That's about 20% faster than the previous optimization and more than two and a half times as fast as I would expect Vanilla Mario 64 to be. In comparison to my previous source rewrite, in this scene we went from 40.5 FPS all the way to 45.5 FPS. And there are some undocumented optimizations that I've done in the meantime since the last video, so I would only attribute about 1.5 FPS to the audio changes. I also added some new geometry and textures and actress to the scene to make use of my newfound power, so in reality the improvement is a bit more than what's being displayed here. Of course, realizing how much of an insane performance boost cache blocking is, as I will call this technique now, I applied this to the entire rest of the source code as well. I've been using all my gathered knowledge and speed improvements to improve visuals and gameplay in earlier stages. Here's some footage of my levels running on a real N64. Shoutouts to all my patrons for their support. Spending this insane effort onto this hack without them would be impossible. Since I get a lot of comments asking about releasing a ROM with this, let's talk about that real quick. Isolating just the improvements would take a long time and while I'm still finding improvements and developing this hack, I really just don't want to do it. I do plan to open source this entire mod here once it's finished. And once that happens, someone else, or much more likely myself, can isolate the and put them into the vanilla game. I'm fairly certain we can get the original Mario 64 running at full 60 FPS on a real N64 with all of this. Hope that answers all the questions. See ya!